Linda, for those who aren't familiar with CIS of North Carolina, can you just explain what it is? Communities and Schools is a nonprofit that is, we have a state office in Raleigh, and we're part of a national network that creates at the local level local communities and schools, where they basically work with the schools in partnership to bring resources to young people who are at risk of dropping out of school. Um, it's a very comprehensive program. It includes mentoring and tutoring, but also we can do after school programs. We often open and learning centers, um, as you saw in the uh, the beginning of the show, um, we provide. Right now, we're having a lot of children that are coming to us that have lost their home, so we try to make sure that that they that we're taking care of those children's basic needs as well as the educational needs. But it's a real partnership with the school system and over 3,000 partners across the state who help provide those resources. So, Kate, okay, this is really multifaceted. Absolutely, absolutely. There's a lot of different elements in communities and schools, and um, as I explained to people when. I do go out and attempt to raise money for our organization. There's a lot of different efforts involved um, at every different age level, from elementary school all the way up through the high school. All right. Well, Kate mentioned support. What kind of support do you get from the community? Uh, we have businesses in the, in the local communities where there are businesses who will adopt a program, for example, the Learning Center, or they may adopt a school. Um, and we have a lot of employees who come in and volunteer, but we have a lot of community involvement, retirees who come in. We actually train them and provide them with the information they need so they're not going in blindly. Um, we help manage and coordinate that, make sure the background checks are done so we follow quality mentoring programs. Um, and then we do a lot of work with the faith community. Sometimes they'll set up um, a clothes closet for us. Or in some examples, where right now one of the issues is food. And so we have some churches that will come in and actually pack backpacks for kids so they can actually eat on the weekends. And it's not to replace what the agencies are doing, but it's also to be a supplement or enrichment for those agencies. So lots of ways for community to be involved. Well, Kate, this is such a serious problem. So many young people fall into this category. How do you track the outcomes of those involved in the program? We actually have had just some a third-party independent testing done um, on communities and schools, and uh, it does show that 97% of the at-risk kids that are in our program do stay in school. And at nationally, CIS is the only organization that actually has been proven to promote graduation and keep kids in school. So there is a lot of testing done that is separate from us. It's not our statistics. It's someone else providing these statistics. So it's definitely something that's been proven to work and be effective. I, I think that, that needs to be repeated. 97% of the students in CIS go all the way through high school. 97% stay in school and go on to graduate. And, and once they're in the CIS program, 97% will stay involved in school. Yeah, that is fantastic. It's huge when you look at the percentage that drops out. So. And I think the national evaluation that Kate refers to was a real um, test for us because it's a five-year national evaluation done by an independent evaluation team that came in and looked at communities and schools across the country. 20% of the entire CIS network is represented here in North Carolina, so we were a huge part of that evaluation. And what it did show was that Communities and Schools is the only proven-based, research-based program in the country to actually produce on-time graduation, which is really critical to us, which is why we focus so much attention at the elementary level, is because we know grade promotion, attendance, behavior, all of those are indicators or risk factors that actually create a dropout at the high school level. So by starting earlier and making sure kids are on track and stay on track, then we can ensure by the time they get to high school that they are actually on track to graduate. Where they, they've slipped through the cracks and we weren't able to catch them early, we've created things like performance learning centers, which are non-traditional high schools, which we're thrilled with because we've already graduated 148 students who, were on the, who had either dropped out or were ready to walk out the door, who were overaged and undercredited, and we're graduating 50 more just in January, and that's just in five programs. So we've got the data, we've got the history, we've got the statistics, and we've got the need. There's no question our phones are ringing off the hook from school districts calling saying, can you come and help us? So the need is there, and I think the willingness of school districts to want to do something. I don't think there's any question that every school district in the state wants to do something to increase the graduation rates. Is this just an inner city problem, or do you see this also in rural areas across the state? It's absolutely throughout the state, and the rural areas in some cases are hit harder because it's a little more difficult for them to raise funds. Uh, we do require funds to operate, and so sometimes the cities actually fare a little bit better in this scenario than some of the rural areas do.
see. Now, we talked about faith-based communities and businesses and corporations, how they can help. What about individuals? How can they get involved in CIS? Um, individuals can volunteer. In fact, it was funny. I was having coffee this morning, and I heard these, overheard these ladies talking about volunteering, and I asked them what they did, and they said they volunteered at Cary Academy. And they said, do you volunteer? And I said, well, actually, I run a statewide volunteer program. So we started a conversation, and this lady said, you know, I'd be willing to help you guys with, with, with this. So she took my card, and she said, you will hear from me, and I'm going to share with all my other ladies a way for us to help not just our own children which is what they're doing with their volunteer but I can also help somebody else who may not be able to have a parent who can come to school have lunch we have lunch buddy programs and for a lot of our kids that's all they need is just somebody to sit down and show they really care about them so they can either be a lunch buddy a mentor a tutor this particular lady said I'd love to tutor some kids in math that's what I love and I was like wow can we use you to help us with math reading but for those that aren't comfortable in the academic areas, they can just be a friend to a young person. Mm -hmm. and, and other businesses and corporations who think this might, something, might be something for our place of business, what can they do? Well, there's a couple of different things that they can do immediately. I think the first thing is the mindset that everyone has to realize that this problem affects every one of us. Uh, whether you, your children are getting an education or not, it affects every taxpayer in this state. Uh, the less money we have to operate, the more likely it is our tax da taxpayer dollars are going to go towards the problems that are created because of dropouts. And in fact, in North Carolina, dropout is six times more likely to be incarcerated than the average citizen, which also means there's a lot of people out there committing crimes that are desperate to survive. And nothing's to stop any of us from being a part of that. So I think the first thing is to realize that this is a problem that reaches and touches every single person in this state. Beyond that, we have two immediate things where people can help in addition to the mentoring as Linda was saying we have our biggest fundraiser every year the North Carolina Education Ball which this year will be in June 26 at the RBC Center you can purchase a ticket to come to the ball companies are able to be sponsors at the ball this year AT&T will be our presenting sponsor at $50,000 which we're just absolutely thrilled about uh, our education ball this year will feature a dance contest with six of our recognizable North Carolina citizens including yours truly John Clark <laughs> <laughs> we're going to put some dancing we're shoes on it. <laughs> there you go. So we're very excited about that. We have some other recognizable names that will be dancing as well. So that is our really signature event, and uh, we plan to host that again June 26. Another thing that you can do immediately is uh, we are raffling off a car in conjunction with Johnson Lexus uh, IS250. And we are only selling a limited number of tickets. We're selling a thousand tickets at hundred dollars a ticket. We will be drawing those tickets uh, May 11th. The last day to buy tickets will be May 7th. Um, on May 11th, we'll draw 25 ticket holder names, and then we'll have a reverse raffle party on the 21st at Johnson Lexus, where a winner will then receive the car plus ten thousand dollars to go towards uh, paying taxes for it. So that is an immediate thing we um, offer to people if they want to get involved. We also have other programs such as Lots for Learning, which is a big program that um, involves the real estate community. Realtors and builders can get involved and give a, a dollar amount per sale that goes towards communities and schools. So if someone is interested in becoming involved, please go to our website and um, you'll be able to find all of these opportunities. Yes, in fact, we're going to put that up on the screen, your website and your phone number. So you can't say, well, there's really no way for me to get involved with this program now, even though it's a fine program. Exactly. Yeah. There's so many ways people can Absolutely. get involved. You know, even a little bit of money from a lot of people makes a huge difference. So to say, well, gosh, you know, $10 isn't going to make a difference. $10 does make a difference because if we got 10,000 people to donate $10, then, you know, that really helps us with to pay for background checks, for example, to, to make sure that kids who come to school that don't have clothes or are abused or need transportation can get transportation. So there's so many need school supplies. You know, when you go to the store and buy school supplies, buy some extra and donate them so in the middle of the year when these kids don't have any school supplies. And I think, too, we have really seen with this economic issue and so many people losing their jobs, what it's like when people aren't employed. And we know this is, a, you know, a, a sort of a blip on the screen of what happens. But for kids who drop out of school, this is going to be their life, a lifetime of unemployment. And that's what we don't want to have happen. We know the economy will turn around. I'm optimistic. Mm -hmm. This will not last forever. But we also need to be prepared for the future when it does turn and make sure that every young person in this state has an opportunity to get a good job, to have a livable wage, and be able to provide for their own families in the future and be workforce ready.
Wonderful. And because, as you said, Kate, we'll actually be paying for many of these young people later on in terms of incarceration and right. trouble that they get into. Right. And as the mother of two teenage boys, it's very important to me to help provide them with a community that's stable and safe and productive. It's not just uh, an issue that affects the dropouts themselves. It does affect all of us and each of our children. Absolutely. All right. Well, Kate Kenny and Linda Harrell, excellent program. Looking forward to the North Carolina Education Ball this year. I don't know about the dancing, but uh, I'll do it for a good cause. Thank you for talking with us today. Thank you.